They're mutually exclusive, nothing to do with that. You might have a lot of light and just use filters to cut it down. Mm. It's, it's not using natural light at all. It's not, nothing to do with the lighting. It's to do with, that, that's separate, that's independent of that. You can have quite a lot of light and sh still shoot wide. I mean, we were shooting in, I don't know, it was like F45 and I still shot wide open. And I sometimes, if, if I measured the light, it would probably be on an interior set, it might be, I don't know, four. So I just put NDs on to bring it down. It doesn't alter the light. No, no, it's not about low level of light. It's about, you still control the light. It doesn't alter, I might have a bit less light, but the principle light and shadow contrast, that remains a constant, as much as you can control it. Not really. The style is dictated by the content of the film. It's no good making something, you know, where, where you need to see the faces all the time, having them in silhouette or any more, but, but sometimes it may work. No, the script dictates what it's like. I do like heavy shadows and I like darkness because I think then an audience's imagination works more. They look at, can't quite see something. If you see something, there's no magic. Oh, I can see everything in this room. You two guys, there, 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 there. There's no magic. And maybe for a particular scene or film that may work, but for other stuff, not. Every director, you have a different thing. Yeah, Alan Parker and I had a great, you know, working relationship for 25, 30 years. Quaron, different. He's a very wide-angle guy, and he loves choreographing the camera. And boy, that is tough. That is really tough. But I like that. It's a, it's a, it's a demand which is, you know, you got to, you got to still make your stuff look great at the same time you're seeing the whole set. Uh, and yeah, there are just different. Like this last film I've just done, there's always bloody green screen everywhere. You could try and, you know, I don't light it, that's done by that department, but try and make stuff look interesting without having green over everybody's face. Films Rarely. You work with an uh, yeah, I mean, the films, I, the last few films are too big. I mean, they're massive. They're like, you know, I'm sitting in a tent, which I don't want a trailer, looking at a screen because we've often got three, four cameras and, you know, we just like the stuff. Is, I could do it if I probably had my regular gaffer with me, but I love operating, but I control it. So it's, I don't physically do it, but I can control it. And the, these last few films have been of a scale where to, it's not like an intimate little drama. You know, where you sit down and you might move stuff a bit. And if I see something I don't like, I just say to the operator, could you just pan left or just be a bit wider or whatever. So the principles are identical. The biggest difference is now everybody talks on little whatevers because you're spread all over the place. And if the, Historically, you'd have the camera there, the director, the cinematographer, the operator, the focus, pulling the script, a little group round. Now they're all over the place. You know, and everybody's talking on these things, everybody's looking at screens. I think if smaller films still are more traditional in how they're made, uh, and you can be because you're centred around the camera, because ultimately, it doesn't matter what goes on, it's got to work for a lump, lump of glass on the front of a piece of machinery, that's it. Take away all the other bullshit about whatever's behind the lens, that's the principles of it, and it has been forever. But now we're much more dispersed. You know, because there's so many people looking at all the various screens and I want to concentrate on what I'm doing, so I don't want to hear somebody talking about wardrobe or the set or continuity or what's for lunch or dinner.